The aim of this experiment is to determine the refractive index of the material of the lens and refractive index of an unknown liquid. But here, in order to find out the radius of curvature, we are not using mercury method or balls method, but instead making use of a liquid of known refractive index. In this experiment, the liquid of known refractive index we are taking as water so that the refractive index can be taken as 1.33. The first stage of this experiment would be to find out the focal length f1 of the convex lens as explained in the previous experiment. The second stage of the experiment would be to make a liquid lens with water. So if capital FW is the combination focal length with water, then from that we can find out what is the focal length of this water lens that is f f1 by f1 minus f. Here we have made use of the law of combination of lenses as explained in the previous experiment. Now that we have evaluated the focal length of this water lens, let us concentrate on the theory to find out the radius of curvature r using the second method. That is, Let's start from the lens maker's formula 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. When we come to this liquid lens, you know that r1 equals infinity and r2 equals minus r. So applying this over here, 1 by fw is equal to mu w minus 1 into 1 by r. Or on rearranging, r is equal to r is equal to mu w minus 1 into fw. Mu w is a refractive index of water and you know that mu w is equal to 1.33. Now we have got the expression for finding out the radius of curvature r r is equal to mu w minus 1 into fw. fw is the focal length of the water lens. mu w is the refractive index of water which we have taken as 1.33. If we want to get accurate readings, we can of course find out the focal length fw dash and fw double dash of water with the two surface of lens interchanged so that it will result in R1 and R2 that is radius of curvature of the two surface of the lens. Now that the two constants R1 and R2 are evaluated and F1 the focal length of the convex lens is already evaluated in stage 1. We can find the refractive index of the lens material of the lens as 1 plus R1 R2 by F1 into R1 plus R2. Actually, this equation is nothing but a rearranged form of the lens maker's formula 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Now that our first aim of finding out the refractive index of the material of the lens is over, we can move on to the third stage where we will be finding out the refractive index of unknown liquid. Here the experiment would include forming a liquid lens with the unknown liquid. I would call the combination focal length of this liquid lens arrangement with unknown liquid as FL. From FL, we can evaluate what is F2, that is FF1 by F1 minus F, which is here called as focal length of the liquid lens, FL. F1 stands for the focal length of the convex lens. We know that for a liquid lens for where R1 is infinity and R2 equals minus R, this lens maker's formula reduces to 1 by FL is equal to mu L minus 1 into 1 by R. FL is a quantity which we have already calculated from the combination focal length capital FL by the relation FL equals FL F1 by 
F1 minus FL. Now that this radius of curvature R is already found out with the help of a liquid of known refractive index that is water and FL the focal length of this liquid lens is also calculated here. On rearranging this equation, we can get mu L is equal to 1 plus R by FL, where FL is the liquid focal length and mu L is the refractive index of the liquid. So, our both aims are accomplished now. Now, to sum up the whole experimental procedure, first we will find out the focal length of the convex lens with the convex lens setup alone on the glass mirror. So distance of the pointer from the lens, this top of the lens, distance of the pointer from the bottom of the lens or you can call it as mirror. Then take the average and that will be the focal length of the convex lens alone. Now find out the combination focal length with the convex lens and liquid of known refractive index. Then by the combination of lenses equation, we can evaluate the focal length of the water lens. If we want accuracy, we can repeat this for the two sides of the lens and from that we will be able to evaluate FW from combination F capital FW FW dash from the combination capital FW dash. So from this we will evaluate R1 and from this we will evaluate R2 using the equation R1 equals mu W minus 1 into FW dash R2 equals mu W minus 1 into FW double dash. From there we will evaluate the refractive index of the material of the lens. In the third stage, we want to evaluate the refractive index of an unknown liquid. For that, we will be doing the combination focal length of the lens with liquid of unknown refractive index. So, we will get FL and FL double dash with the two faces of the lens. From these parameters, we can evaluate small FL which is the focal length of this liquid lens of unknown refractive index. For this, we will be using the relation mu L is equal to 1 plus R by F. Coming to the experimental setup of liquid lens 2, we will keep the lens over the mirror and adjust the position of the object and get the image without parallax error. Take the measurement from top of the lens. Then remove the lens and take the measurement. These measurements will help you to find out the focal length of this convex lens. Now as the second part, we will introduce few drops of water then place the lens over that, take the measurement from top of the lens, then take the measurement after removing the lens that is from top of the bureau and we can enter those values as the combination focal length, distance of the pointer from the top of the lens, distance of the pointer from the mirror. So this is the combined focal length of the lens and the water lens. So from the combined focal length, we can evaluate what is the focal length of the water lens FW as FF1 by F1 minus F. Now that we have evaluated FW and we know that refractive index of water is 1.33, you can use this relation to find out the radius of curvature. Once the radius of curvature R1 and R2 is found out from this relation, we can substitute it here and use it to find out the refractive index of the material of the prism. Here F1 is the focal length of the convex lens. Now we can extend this experiment 
to find out the refractive index of an unknown liquid. For that, here I am using an unknown liquid. So I will introduce a bit of the liquid on the mirror. And then place the convex lens over it so that a liquid lens arrangement is formed. Now, as in the earlier case, I will try to focus this object without parallax error for the image. So, I'll focus it, keep it at the right position without parallax error for the image. Take the measurement from top of the lens, then remove the lens from the bottom of the lens or top of the mirror. So these readings can be used as a combined focal length for the new liquid lens. Now entering this value in the tabular column for combination of lens with liquid of unknown refractive index. So you can enter the distance of the pointer from the top of the lens here, distance of the pointer from the mirror here. Find out what is the combined focal length capital FL. From these values, we can evaluate what is the focal length of this new liquid lens. That is FL is equal to F, F1 by F1 minus F, where FL is the focal length of the unknown liquid combination. On rearranging this equation, we can get mu L is equal to 1 plus R by FL, where FL is the liquid focal length and mu L is the refractive index of the liquid. So, our both aims are accomplished now. So, to conclude this liquid lens 2 experiment, we have used a known refractive index liquid to find out the radius of curvature and using that, we have evaluated the refractive index of an unknown liquid. Thank you.